Hey everybody, Tyler Parsons back again. If you struggle with lower back tightness or pain during or even after a round of golf, I have 10 exercises you need to be doing every day to eliminate the issue and make you feel a lot better. So let's go on and dive in and get started. some tightness in that lower back. Extremely common for a lot of golfers, obviously. Uh, very repetitive motion. Sometimes the body's not symmetric. Sometimes we have tightness. Sometimes it's as simple as you have bad technique in your swing, okay? So if you're that person who looks like the hips and shoulders are glued together, you're putting a lot of torque and twisting on that lower back, which is actually designed to be nice and stable, okay? so. If you think that it's due to your swing, feel free to send that over to me. I'll check it out, give you some little tidbits there. If we know for sure that it's tightness, here are 10 exercises you should be doing every day. We're gonna start really simple and we're gonna hit at the hamstrings, okay? So the hamstrings extend down, they go up, and they actually attach into the lower back. What we want to do is elevate the toes, feet together, knees nice and straight, and go down as low as you can go, hold just for a second, come back up, and we're just going to repeat, okay? We'll go through our set of 10 just like that. Try to set a goal, go a little bit deeper on each one, so if you start off, you know, not being able to get down to the tongue of your shoe, try to really push yourself. The next one I'm not even counting as another exercise, it's a different variation. A lot of times what I see with people is they don't properly hip hinge, meaning they're trying to round their back and get down there. And from here, I'm gonna need to inspect your gadget arms in order to make that happen. So let's work on the hip hinge. We'll still use the foam roller. We're gonna take our heels up. And from here as we bend over, if I don't stick my butt out and hip hinge, I'm basically gonna fall over. So it's great to teach you how to bend, stick your butt out, and see my back so nice and flat and then we can go down. Probably won't be as big of a stretch, but a great learning cue for you to learn how to use those hips to get down and then stretch out those hamstrings. Number two, let's hit those hips. We're gonna look at the external rotation. Basically, as we go to turn, how is this leg going to work? How's this leg gonna work? It's all independent upon those hips. There's two different vari variations we can do. We can do a standing in which always support that knee and just pull that leg up. Or we can go down onto the ground, which is what I advise a lot of you do. Cross that leg over. We want to grab behind that knee and you can even support the knee here if you want and pull that back up towards you. It's fine if the hips come up and roll a little bit, but really try to pull Nice and big, and what we're gonna be stretching out is that piriformis, okay? So a lot of you are gonna say, well, where's the piriformis? Go through that stretch, you're gonna know exactly where it is, helping out that external rotation, leading to freeing up those hips and alleviating that lower back. Hip drops. Very straightforward, very easy, working both internal and external. We're gonna go onto the ground. We're gonna have our feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. What we want to do is focus on keeping this pelvis on the floor, hip bone touching. And I want to drop both knees and try to get them down to the ground. So right here, I'm experiencing a lot of tightness on this internal. And then as we drop down and over, now we're switching. If you're very tight in the hips, you're going to feel a stretch on both. If you're tight just on one versus the other, internal versus external, that's going to show up as well. And this is very helpful because once you know where you're tight, there's additional stretches that we can spend time working on to improve just that area instead of trying to hit a broad area hoping that we're hitting the right thing. Exercise four, extremely straightforward. Uh, I would say if you're having back problems, you've probably done this. We're just gonna lay on the ground. We're gonna grab one knee and it's a nice knee to chest stretch right here. And what I like to have people do is then drop it down to the side as well. Pull that up more towards the shoulder and then we can sort of go across the body just a little bit so it doesn't pinch and pull that back as well, okay? 
And all we want to do is really hold it just a couple of seconds, let off and keep working through that range of motion. Big thing is I want you to not let this back come off the ground. So really roll those hips slightly under and brace through that midsection as you're pulling. And obviously we want to do both legs. Make sure that they're both nice and even. If you notice that one is way tighter than the other, we definitely have a problem. Exercise five. I noted at the beginning that it could be due to poor mechanics in the swing, in which case we're talking about separation. What we'd love to have happen is that once you load up in this backswing, we can let the hips work independently of that upper body. So you can really see that they're opening up. Again, if you're the person that comes in here and it's way out in front and it's glued together, again, that's probably gonna be the issue. What we wanna do is work on stork turns. We're gonna hold the shoulders very still. We're gonna let that knee go across the body and don't worry about it going this way, okay? It's just back to the middle and across. Shoulders as still as you can. I love this exercise to help out with separation, but you can tell it's also gonna work on that balance. So if you need to go on and start by holding on to something, feel free to, but get started on those as well to help out, to allow those hips to work the way that they're supposed to. So starting on number six right here, a little over halfway, we're going to look at open books. Just like the hips need to work independent, the shoulders need to be able to work independent as well, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put you down onto the ground, pick whichever side you want. I want both knees to overlap each other, and I want the thighs to be perpendicular with the chest here. What we're gonna do is keeping those knees and hips very still, I want you to be able to open up and give me a nice big turn. Focus on trying to get this shoulder down to the ground, not the hand, but the shoulder, letting it drag and open up and go back. Now the other big key is the knees cannot move. All right, if you notice that the knees are wanting to move, that's actually the hips opening up, which is what we're trying to get away from. That may require you to have somebody hold that hip until we can get it stretched out. But at the end of the day, I need you to understand how to hold those hips still, making sure that we're bracing and stabilizing correctly while we're moving, do both directions. For the right-handed golfer, you're probably gonna notice that, that left is a little tighter and lacking in that rotation, and that's where we really want to add to that and help that shoulder turn out. Number seven, we're gonna do leg overs. And leg overs are the opposite of our open book. We're gonna be down on the ground, we're lifting the leg up and lowering it down. Now the reason that I like this, it's a lot like the stork turn, but we're gonna get a big stretch in through the hamstring. We're gonna get it up into the hip, the glute knee. There's gonna be a lot going on in through there, hitting a lot of areas. So it's really gonna be good to identify, again, where that tightness is. So we're laying down from here. I'm gonna lift my leg up nice and straight, lowering it down the best I can. The hips are rotating, but again, this shoulder, right shoulder in this case, must stay on the ground. Up, lowering it down up with the opposite leg, nice rotation. You can probably notice this I just a touch tighter on me. And that's what we're wanting to do again, identify it and then stretch it out. The straighter and higher you can get that leg, the more you're gonna feel it in through the hip, in through that lower back. That's what we're after, tackle it. If you wanna use a strap to help you pull a little bit because you're too tight, I'm definitely gonna encourage that. We have to improve that range of motion. Number eight, we're going to do divers. Now the divers are actually going to get down into the erector and hit into the QL. If you're not sure where the QL is, just like that piriformis, as soon as we go through the stretch, you're gonna know. What we wanna do is we wanna sit down, we wanna kick this leg out to the side and still straight forward from the legs roughly 45. I've got the other one tucked in. And I want to do basically a side bend. So I'm not trying to square up and go down, but I'm reaching up and across. The higher I get this hand, I'm actually getting into that lat as well. And then as I keep going down, a really big stretch down to that side of the lower back. We can go over to the other side. The left side is always 
tighter and a little bit more uncomfortable for me. We want to set there, hammer out that set, trying to hold just for a second, going deeper and deeper, and then you can finish to help out with that lower back as well. Trying to pull and go down, either touch your toes. I always like to think about trying to get my forehead down to my knees. No, that may not happen for a lot of you, but it's really gonna hit those hamstrings up into that lower back. Again, we've already talked about the importance of the hamstring, but now we're gonna hit, again, that QL next to that erector and really get that nice and loose so that we don't have that low back tightness. Our last two are superheroes. All right, we're gonna be doing Spider-Mans to start this one. What I wanna do is go down into a push-up position. I'm going to bring my foot up next to my hand. I want the foot to be nice and flat. We're actually gonna to try to drop down into it on that hip a little bit and turn up and rotate, okay? Then we're back down, switching over to the other side. Nice big turn. As we bring that foot up, we're opening up into that hip. Then as we go to rotate, we're rotating around. So it's gonna be a lot like our back swing and our follow through to really help out. No, that's not where our tightness is really stemming from, but again, if they're not doing their job, something has to pick up the slack. Typically, it's that lower back, so we really wanna make sure that that's doing its part. All right, last but not least, number 10, we can't talk superheroes without talking about Superman. What we wanna do is go down onto our stomach, and there's a lot of variations we can do here. Pick whichever one is the most comfortable, for you that you can actually get through, okay? So we're from here, you can put your face down on the floor, leave it up, but we wanna start with opposites, lifting that hand up, activating in that trap, plus lifting up with that leg, hitting into that glute, that lower back. We then wanna switch over and do the same. So right and right, left and left, Getting it up, again, as high as you can go. You should feel a nice little burn in that low back. We're activating those muscles, making them do their job. A lot of times they're not even used. You'll then finish it off. Both up at the same time. Again, as high as you can go. Activating the erectors, like I said on the ground, making them do their job, a lot of times, due to sitting in poor posture, they're shut down, so then we go to use them. We ask them to brace while we're trying to rotate the golf swing. It's usually a disaster. 10 exercises to help out that lower back with tightness. Again, try to do them every day. Should be a nice, quick, simple workout for you. Help you improve. Be sure to check out parsonsgolfperformance.com. Make sure to go on and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you never miss any content.